tab. So welcome to my MS Paint tutorial. And I'm just going to talk, you know, a little bit about why you might want to try this out, why you might want to start messing around with other random programs that you find on the internet. Uh, and it's really just to expand your way of thinking. Uh, when I was doing second year, which is kind of the year we all start getting into animating, uh, because it's online, I was only using Photoshop, and it was kind of making me uh, lose my mind a little because um, when it comes to Photoshop, you have so many options, and you're really, for me anyways, I'm pressured to make something that looks clean and that looks good, but it doesn't always mean that I'm going to get it done. Uh, but what I've found in using programs that are really limiting, like MS Paint, like it's very hard to make anything look super good in MS Paint. It's possible, it's just going to take a really long time. So when you're animating in Paint, you might feel a little more inclined to finish something rather than make something look good. And that can be fun because you're not worried about how amazing it's going to be. Um, you know, you can experiment, you can get goofy, uh, you don't have to show it to anybody, it can be for yourself. And it's just a even though it's tedious, it can be less stressful just because that pressure is off to like make something look so refined and so uh, good because you don't have any of those options. Uh, so, oops, where did that go? I'm missing a guy. Where's my guy? Is he in here? Yes, he is. So I have been whoop, messing around with this. My goodness, what is happening? Uh, not too much, not crazily. I haven't been making massive music videos with it. I've been just making little tiny GIFs using paint. They're not amazing, but, you know, I've had fun doing that, and that's how I've been practicing animation, you know, during the summer, is not stressing myself out, trying to make something fucking incredible, just doing these goofy little guys. Um, so let's get into the nitty gritty of it. I'm going to get rid of myself here real quick. Um, but you guys are probably wondering how the fuck do you do animation in paint? Well, it's 100% possible, and I owe it to 12-year-olds um, in like 2008 who figured this out because they're little innovators. I was a big Warrior Cats kid, and a lot of those artists that made uh, AMVs for that book series used MS Paint and Movie Maker because they're 12 and they can't buy. Was Photoshop was like 700 bucks when it wasn't a subscription. It was insane. Um, but, you know, MS Paint's a program that doesn't have layers. So how, like, even if you're using an external movie program to, like, sequence all the images together, how the fuck do you animate? Well, there is... Believe it or not, transparency in MS Paint. But before we get to that, I'm just going to make sure everyone's familiar with the tools. I'm sure anyone with a PC has MS Paint. Whether or not you use it, I don't know, so I'm just going to go briefly. This is your colors. This is the size of your pen. Um, this is Paint 3D with Windows 10. It's a new edition. It's an entirely new program. You draw something here, you click this button, and it sort of takes it into that program. Uh, I don't really use it, so I'm not going to touch that. Uh, here we have all these shapes, the options to fill the shapes. The fill option when you're doing shapes is the secondary color. Uh, so that's that. Um, here we have brushes, which are normally on paint. We're going with the pencil brush, which is this pixely, um, just one size only brush, but we also have, I'm just going to go over some of my favorites, we have like the chisel tip, which you can get some cool lines with, uh, my ride or die is the crayon brush, usually in the smallest setting for drawing, uh, it's barely noticeable, but there is a bit of color variation in this particular brush, which can help make some more dynamic drawings if you're looking to draw in paint. But 
that's basically the basics for paint that you can see at face value. There's also oh shit, whoops. Um, there's also like select, rotate, but the real something else interesting I'll, I will bring up is if you go to file and you go to properties you can actually change everything into screen tones. Now this doesn't really have to do anything with the animation part, um, just because animating in this setting is pretty much impossible, but it's still interesting for drawing purposes. So if you go to properties, that little thing pops up, it says black and white, just press okay, and you can draw using, oh, sorry, I'm on the secondary color, screen tones again which is really cool, so I'm going to select that, I'm going to fill that, and yeah, screen tones, amazing. Uh, so once again, that's in properties, which is in file, black and white, or color. I'm just going to go back to color, and just get rid of this. So, animating in paint. Um, so believe it or not, there is transparency in MS Paint. It is only within the actual program. You can't save transparent images, but within the program, you can work with transparencies. And that is made available with transparent selection. So normally, say, oh, god damn it. So let's, I'm going to draw like a little scene. It's like a rock or something. And then I'm going to draw over here a snail. Nothing spectacular, but say I want to like put the snail in that environment. Well, normally with paint, you would select it and you try to move it, but it selects the background because it's all one layer and you have this big, annoying, stupid box. But with transparent selection, which is in select, you click that and bam. All the white is made transparent, and that's because the white is set as the secondary color. And whatever the secondary color is, is what will be made transparent using transparent selection. So knowing that, I'm just going to get rid of this, I am going to animate something. So let's say we're just going to do, this isn't the demo part, this is just me telling you uh, how it works. Um, so let's say I have this and it's going to be my first frame. Uh, let's go save as. So I've got also folder organization is really important in this, but I'm not going to go over that just yet. I'll get to that in the demo. Uh, so I'm just going to save this as like one. So it's frame one. If it would save, that would be, no, it's freezing, that's great. Um, so that's, frame one is saved and it's right there. Uh, so I want to make frame two. What I would do is I would choose a different color. Uh, probably maybe a pink is good. So it's more like, you know, how when you have onion skin on, it's sort of faded out. Uh, then I take my black again, and I draw the next thing, and... You don't need to use transparent selection. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do it with the eraser tool. Uh, but with that in mind, with the idea that transparency does work in MS Paint, uh, if you click, um, sorry, it's in this case, it's you select this color, which is the primary color. And you make sure the eraser is set to white, which is the secondary color. You select the eraser tool, and with the right, with, by right clicking your mouse, if you press erase, you can erase everything except the black. So you only erase the pink. Any other color you have on here would also not be erased. It's just the pink. Another way to do it is by using transparent selection. Uh, sort of like the opposite thing. So I want to go this way, and I want to so make sure to select the entire screen if you're doing it this way, because if you don't, if you only select around the shapes, 
once you paste it back on, it's going to go and reset right to the corner, and it, the positioning of your drawing is going to be off. So just make sure you have everything selected. Um, then just with transparent selections uh, ticked on, on your keyboard, control X, so cut. And after that, we want to make sure that your transparent color is set to pink. So that means when you paste it on, the pink is going to be transparent, and you're just going to have your second frame. Then you have to go in and save as two. So that being said, uh, that's basically the basics of how to animate in MS Paint. So I'm going to get started with the demo. If you want to interject, ask a question, ask for me to go over anything again, feel free to do so. Uh, if you're watching this asynchron asynchronously on the recording, uh, the demo will be played slow for a little bit, and then I'm going to speed it up just so you're not watching me tediously draw little guys all the time. So with this demo, I'm also going to talk about folder organization, which is super important in um, animating with paint. And then after I have all these frames drawn for this demo, I'm going to show you how to use uh, basically Movie Maker or the default. Uh, make this smaller. The default kind of Windows movie editing app to put them all together. It's pretty straightforward. You just kind of put them together and then make the duration really, really short. Um, so folder organization, I'm going to briefly go over if I sit, when I save this first frame. Uh, so save, oops, shit, save as, sorry. Uh, so what you want to do is I have a animation folder, and I also have a folder called frames. Uh, and this way, I can go in to each thing and just kind of name them one, two, three, four to save time without overwriting anything else. So with this project, I'm going to make one called head. And I'm just going to save it as one. And this is where the demo sort of begins. So any questions you have, feel free to ask. Uh, Ray, if someone's asking a question, let me know. But here we go. I'm just going to start animating this dude. Sorry, my tablet's old as fuck, so it sometimes just does this funny little jumpy thing where it makes my computer do all sorts of funny, stupid stuff. See, I'm just not caring about accuracy. This is so off, but, like, I'm animating in paint. So who cares? So I am going to show again how to do the selection version. So that is, once again, making sure transparent is selection is selected. Uh, you can just leave it as default when you press Control X to cut. Then you have to make sure this is your uh, onion skin color when you press and it's say you put it back down and it's just the next frame that you've drawn save as png you always want to do save as so you don't overwrite your file change the file name to two press enter rinse and repeat make sure that's white so you can see how tedious it can be to sort of do this whole thing so you're really just trying to make sure that you're getting something done you're getting something made you don't have to make something beautiful. Anything you make will be beautiful, though, of course. So we'll see how goofy this head animation looks in a second, because it's really not going to be fantastic. I am not following any sort of timing rules right now. <laughs> oh, shit. And so I'm going to do the eraser one this time. So setting the onion skin color to your primary color, selecting the eraser tool, and then 
right-clicking as you erase will only erase the color that you have selected. I'll also show you how to add uh, color after. Color is something you have to do at the end because it does get way too complicated. You kind of have to do everything one step at a time. Save as three. Then I'm going to use the fill bucket to change everything into pink. All right, uh, just so I, just because it might be interesting, using this eraser method can also change the color of your lines. If you set this to a different color, uh, it will turn. It's basically just changing the selected primary color to the color of the eraser, which is normally white. But you can set it to anything. Let's give this dude. So he's going to be facing forward now. Another great thing about uh, animating in paint is because you have to do everything one step at a time, you're not checking your animation. So you're not worried about how perfect it is, how the movement's looking. So if you really want to like practice animating, but you're like being really self-critical of yourself, this is a good way to kind of just do it without giving a shit on how wonderful it looks. Any tablet users, if you, I have a Wacom Intuos Pro and it's got like that pen thing. You can use that as your right click as well, for, but you can't touch the tablet. You have to hover it, which is a little weird. Um, but yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, I didn't even save that one. <laughs> Could you imagine if I just did all this without saving any of my frames? And then only finding out in near the very end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Luckily, uh going backwards so like doing undo you can do it whoa he's got a really crazy eye for some reason <laughs> uh yeah you can undo quite a bit in ms paint so if you accidentally overwrite one of your files it's usually depending on how much you've drawn is not that bad of a fix So, yeah, my favorite method is the eraser one, just because I don't have to select everything. Fuck off. That was so rude. My computer's literally trying to sabotage me right now. Um, but if you're working with a really big canvas, this is why is that even happening? Stop telling me that Ray is inviting me to Teams events, <laughs> I know. Uh, but if you have a super big, super detailed um, drawing, the select method is probably the better one to use. It's five. Also, uh, I guess I'm gonna take time to go over animating um is easiest with the pencil tool which is the tool i'm using now it's like the default you know most recognizable animation uh not animation drawing tool in ms paint everyone knows it you theoretically could use these ones uh i'm going to explain why that might not be the vibe so i'm just going to lay down some onion skinned uh, pink 
chisel brush strokes, and I'll show you why it doesn't really work out as great as the pixely uh, pencil tool. And it's because of that color is transparency thing. It fucks it up, which sucks, but, you know, it's MS Paint. What can you do? This guy's head shape has just totally changed, but that's fine. So I'm going to go in with the select, just so it's quicker. So I've selected pink, so that means everything that's pink should be transparent. However, with these brushes in this tab, uh, there is a softened edge to most of them. Uh, and because transparency is color-based, anything that's that color but lighter is counted as a completely different color, and it doesn't pick it up. However, if you're experimenting and you think that could be a cool effect for whatever you're making, knock yourself out, go ahead, mess around, have fun. It's the whole point. Just a warning that if you're like, oh, I really like this brush, I want to animate with it, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to look super great. Save as PNG. Six. Let's see if I can get a whole turnaround so I can show you how to kind of use other frames that you've previously made to help you with your animation to make it if you're making a loop, make it loop better. That's so annoying. I don't know why my computer does that. If you can see that stupid pop-up thing happening. It's... the Whatever. That also happens where it just decides to change the zoom. Because my tablet is like... Eight years old. I don't even know. Oh, I forgot to draw his ear entrance in that last frame. It's fine. It's not important. No, not doing that. If any of you guys are falling around, falling around, following along, it'd be really cool if you guys were comfortable with sharing what you guys are making, but if no one is, no problem. It's not a big deal. Oh, fuck. I saved over. See, here we go. Problem solving. I accidentally saved over my last frame. Just undo, undo, undo until everything's black. Save again. And just redo. Just make sure you don't touch anything after you've undoed. Press the undo button because you will cancel out everything you did before undoing, which sucks. So save as always. Change the file name. And you'll be on your way. <laughs> so I'm going to really sloppily finish this so it turns around. It's a little too extreme. Like, you can see I'm really not making this look nice. But that's because I just don't care. <laughs> Save as PNG 12. And so I want to use this beginning frame to like finish my loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to pink. I'm going to select the entire, the entire window, the entire canvas, uh, and I'm going to copy it. I'm not going to save this. It's you don't need to. 
Uh, then I'm going to go and open my first frame. Don't save this. You don't need to. Uh, I'm going to change this to a different color. Let's make it red. And then I'm going to paste the other frame over top of it. See, look at the difference in that. Look how off it is. That's fine. Who cares? Because I had a blast drawing my funny little guy. My voice just cracked there. <laughs> Sorry about that. So this is everything coming together. And then I'm just going to quickly do the select way. No, actually, never mind. Do the eraser. Oh, OK. Sometimes, so this is a bit of a problem. It fucks up, and you get overloaded, and it just doesn't want to do it. That's fine. As long as you're not getting too complicated, you can use the bucket tool to kind of chip away at everything else by just using white to fill in everything that's kind of sticking out. I don't know why it does this. Uh, probably because it's being forced to do things it doesn't want to. But um, if you can't get big chunks of it off, it's usually when the copy and paste thing from another file that I think does that, but it's not too bad of a fix if you're not super complicated with what you're making. So save as 13. Yes. So we're going to go and just type in movie video editor. So this is basically what I use to compile these together. Uh, here's the dog one that I made when I compiled it on uh, Movie Maker. If you're a Mac user, you can basically do the same thing on any sort of drawing program and use iMovie to sequence it together. I'm sure people know that. I'll just name this head. Uh, get my folder up. To ignore all my other projects. Uh, you kind of grab everything. I'd grab it from the first to the last. Drag it in. Make sure everything's sequenced in the right way, which it is. Go up, make sure everything's selected in your timeline. Whoop, that didn't work. Hello, I want to select you. Shift, select, oh, I guess you have to do it individually, which is annoying. Shift, select everything. You can see I'm already kind of moving in the little window here. Uh, right click, duration, set it to something like point, is it point zero 0.02 or point 0.2? I'm going to say point 0.2. And there you go. It doesn't really loop, so you kind of have to keep pressing it. But this is our MS Paint animation. Uh, if you wanted to add color, to your frames, you would go in and you would probably do it after, but that's only if you're doing uh, kind of just like solid colors, as you would just go in and fill it after. It's just way easier. If you have a character, let's say, uh, yeah, I'll save that. That's like, say you're a warrior cat's animator, and you want to animate a cat with spots, but you don't want to have the spots drawn in with like a black outline. Uh, so we basically can do the same thing. It's just going to get a little bit more complicated because we're adding more things that we need to turn into different colors. You're basically categorizing everything by color. Uh, so this is one frame and pretend I saved it, but then I want to add his spots, and he's going to have orange spots. So I'd make him orange. And then I would fill it in, and I would save it. 
So the next frame is what I would want to do is I would want to make the lines a different color. Oop, shit. And then I would want to make the pattern a different color. And then how I would go about drawing my next frame would be roughly the same. It's just you have to keep in mind more colors, more things to erase, more steps to your already tedious process. So I'm not going to make this incredible, but I'm just going to show you what it's... It does look a little crazy. Uh, of course, you can use edit colors to get some softer, I think more eye-friendly colors. You can also do everything using gray and black, and then changing everything to the colors you need in post. Uh, I'm not going to explain how to do that, just because it's a bit of a process, but I'm sure you could figure it out if you went and tried this on your own. So this is what my my frame lines would look like. I wouldn't fill it in just yet. I would focus on erasing, and this is a point where I would really use the selection method of getting a different frame. So select the whole thing, make sure it starts at 0, 0 on your coordinates of the canvas, which is the top left corner all the way down to the bottom right. Um, just make sure transparent selection is selected. Uh, choose what color you want to make transparent. So I'm going to get rid of the pink. And then I'm going to make this white again. Get rid of it again. Make the transparent color red. And what the f Oh, sorry. My bad. Okay, paste it, select out of it before you select again the whole canvas. Make sure that's set back to white again. Press that. Choose your line color, then get rid of it. Then you can go in and fill your spots. That's pretty much it. That is the tutorial. Uh, I guess if you have any questions now, you could also ask. Uh, but I didn't see anyone during, hear anyone during the demo, so I'm not sure if anyone does have any questions. If you have any thoughts, uh, if you've made anything and you want to share, feel free to speak up. Where did my um, video so I thing? Have a question. Yes. What do you exact? Can you explain the process where you select the whole frame? Yeah. You cut it and then paste it again? Yes. So all the... I will write down the sequence that I do after I show it real quick. So you kind of just have to like go into the corner. Can you see my mouse? Yes. Okay. You really have to like nail the corner. Click and drag all the way. And then you... Basically all the commands I'm using are copy are cut and paste. Not copy, but cut and paste. So let's just get rid of... Oh, shit. Yeah, let's get back to this again. So start at the corner, 0, 0. And then you control X to get rid of it. Select the color you want to make transparent. Control V to paste, and then re select out. Make sure you deselect everything. Select again. Select the other color you want. Oh, no, we want to make that white when we're cutting. And then when you're pasting, select the color you want to get rid of in your secondary color, and paste it, and that's that again. So this color is generally the transparent color. Always. The secondary color, so color 2, will always be transparent when you have transparent selection selected. So for example, just to reiterate that, I'm going to get rid of this guy's, and I'm also going to show you what happens if you don't select the whole thing. So I'm going to press X. I'm going to make that orange, get rid of his spots. But you see how it moves the selection? So it's up here. That's why you want to select the whole thing, because it will just move your frame out of the place it's supposed to be.
which is annoying, but whatever. <laughs> uh, if you wanted to add, um, just going off of the black and white, uh, if you want to use black and white for your animations, uh, the you're not you can't convert this. If you convert this to black and white, um, it'll just turn everything black. So if you want something in black and white, I would save your frames like this with an outline on anything that you want a different shade of gray. Do all your frames in the regular color setting first, convert it, then fill them in with, don't do what I'm doing because I'm doing it wrong, with whatever you want, and that way you can have black and white animations or GIFs using paint.